Okay, 1911 Series 80 reassembly. We'll start with the frame, trigger. You have a short side and a long side. The long side goes down. It's going to drop right in that those tracks right there. Easy. Magazine release is next. Drops right in. You will need to push it slightly out to get the little lock to engage in the proper slot. And there it goes. We're good there. Next is going to be the disconnect. This is the way that works best for me. You can watch 10 different videos and they'll tell you 10 different ways to do it. This is what's been successful for me. Put a finger over the little disconnect hole in the frame, flip it over, and the part that looks like a hammerhead, the flat side, I want that sitting down right here on top of the trigger bar, so I'm just going to drop the disconnect in the hole, let it go, and that's exactly where I want it to be. Next we're taking the sear, and the sear basically just looks like a scoop, so we want to take this sharp, sharp side of the scoop, and we're going to point that up, and it's just going to straddle the disconnect, so I'm going to drop it right over the disconnect, just like that, and that's exactly how I want it. Pretty simple. Next we get into one of the Series 80's parts and this is the trigger bar lever and I'm going to turn this sideways real quick just to show you how this is oriented in the gun. It's going to actually sit just like this so you're going to have this short, little short side pointed up, long side pointed down and the rounded side will be pointed towards the barrel of the gun. Now here's the easiest way I've found to do this. I like to put a finger in here back behind the sear and disconnect and that kind of blocks off that little hole and this is going to go just on this side, just to the right of the sear and disconnect. Kind of hard to see right here, but we'll drop it in. And having my finger back there allows me to kind of manipulate where the hole is and where that part is. So once I think I've got it lined up, I just grab a toothpick, shove it through, and if I have everything in there correctly, I can hit the trigger and I can shake it. And nothing should fall out and everything is good and you can see that little part right in there so we'll flip it over it should be stacked I could remove the toothpick take my sear pin drop it in and we're good again shake to check everything's good um, next series 80 80s 80 part I'm gonna keep my finger on this sear pin so it doesn't fall out it is going to be oriented just like this and the hammer pin is actually going to hold that in place so what we're going to do it's going to drop oh excuse me it did drop it's going to drop right here I'm just going to slide it again to the right and that's as, that's as easy as it is and you'll see that top little lip sits right in this recess right here that little finger that sticks off that's exactly where we want it now we can come in with the hammer, we'll get the strut out of the way, put the hammer in and I'm just going to take a peek through that hole to line it up. Once we've got it lined up, we'll uh, drop that hammer pin in, simple as that. Okay, next thing is the sear spring and we've got a little flange here at the bottom. A little flange sticks in this little slot in the frame right here. So that flange, that slot. So we're gonna put this right here. Make sure that drops in where we want it. And that's exactly what we want. We'll bring a strut down. We'll take the mainspring housing. You see that little hole in the top of the mainspring housing? We want that strut right there sticking in this hole when we slide it up. So for right now, we're just going to slide it part of the way in. So we got to get the grip safety in there. So take our grip safety, and that just drops right in. You may need to shake it around to get the strut lined up underneath it. And there we go. That went in real clean. We will take our mainspring housing pin. And remember you've got a convex side and you've got a concave side with a little dent in it. 
um, we want to push the convex side in first. So right there, and I've got a little block to tap it on. There we go. That's in. Next is going to be the safety. And to get that safety in, we've got to have our hammer cocked back. So we'll cock the hammer back all the way. Um, do not squeeze the trigger while this hammer's cocked back unless your slide's on. I've seen people do that on some videos. You can do a lot of damage to your gun like that, so just don't do it. Wait till you've got the slide on, or if you do want to release this hammer up, hold on to the hammer and then hit your trigger and let it up gently so you don't crack your frame, bend your hammer, you know, all kinds of damage you can do there. So we will grab our little plungers. We've got the slide stop plunger. Um, slide stop plunger is actually a little bit smaller. You see the size difference in these two plungers. Um, the bigger plunger is a safety plunger. Small one goes in first, just like that. Then we will drop the safety in. And just a good solid push down and wiggling up and down and it should squeeze in there and push that, uh, that plunger in. So we are good with those parts. That's pretty much it for the frame for right now. We're going to move on to the slide. So exact opposite order of how we tore down. Uh, we've got our extractor first. And we'll drop that extractor in. And if you get a good view up here, let's see. Yeah, if you get a good view here, you'll see that we need to get this little hole and a part in the extractor has got to be lined up so that we can put this plunger and this plunger spring in. It's going to go right through here. So if it will not go down, and this one did, but if it will not, you may need to push your extractor in and out until you find that hole that lines up and you can push this down. Once you can push your plunger down, go ahead and push the extractor all the way in and that's going to lock that plunger in. So now the plunger will not fall out. So it is retained. Next thing is going to be firing pin. And remember, this firing pin cannot go in as long as that block is uh, disengaged like that. So we are going to push that plunger in. That will allow us to drop in the firing pin. I'm going to get my punch and we'll push it down real low just like we did on disassembly. And we'll let go of it. And. Uh, that firing pin stop is going, or excuse me, the um, firing pin safety there is going to retain the firing pin for us so that we can take the firing pin stop, slide it up, and then we will release it by pushing on that plunger. That's it for the slide. Um, at this point, it is pretty much um, reassembly just like you would do from a basic field strip. So we'll go barrel in. Links up out of the way. Okay. Guide rods in. Line up the disco notch. there. Bushing goes in. Crank it back to the side. That side of the spring in first. Spring plug. And okay at this point the next thing we need to do is check to make sure all of our safety functions are, are operable. So I've got the thumb safety on right now. I am not going to engage the grip safety. I'm just going to squeeze the trigger. We should get nothing. Good, it will not go. 
We'll go ahead and squeeze in the grip safety. Thumb safety is still on, so we should get nothing. Good. I'm going to take the thumb safety off, but I am not going to engage um, the grip safety, and we should still get nothing. So all of our safeties are functioning properly. Now if we do squeeze that in, we should get a fire, and we're good. Last thing you can do is a little pencil test. Make sure you get a pencil with a good eraser on it. Drop the eraser in first, and we should get projection. There we go. Um, at this point, the only thing left is putting these pretty grips back on, and I won't bore you with that. I hope that video was useful for you. Feel free to leave any comments or questions.